matters not how straight the gate, how punishment charged the scroll. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. From prisoner to president, Nelson Mandela's incredible journey reshaped a nation and inspired the world. Join us as we explore the life, legacy, and untold stories of the man who turned the tide against Apathid. This is a story you won't want to miss. And as a special treat, we'll end with Nelson Mandela's favorite poem, brought to life in the iconic voice of Morgan Freeman. Stay tuned. Nelson Mandela was born on July 18, 1918, in the village of Mavezo, South Africa. His early years were influenced by his father's role as a local chief and counselor. Mandela was adopted by Chief John Gintaba Dalindiebo. He received his formative education in Kunu and prestigious Wesleyan schools. Nelson Mandela was expelled from the University College of Fort Hare in 1940 due to his involvement in a student protest. Mandela's legal studies and activism against apartheid shaped him. 27 years of imprisonment on Robben Island turned him into a global symbol of resistance. This led to his election as South Africa's first black president. Nelson Rolilahla Mandela was born on July 18, 1918, in the village of Mvezo in Umtata, then part of South Africa's Cape Province. Mandela's father, Gadla Henry Mufakan Yiswa, was a local chief and counselor to the monarch. Mandela was given the forename Rolilahla, which means pulling the branch of a tree, or colloquially, troublemaker. After his father's death, Mandela was adopted by Chief Jongintaba Dalindiebo, the acting regent of the Thembu people. Mandela attended primary school in Kunu, where his teacher, Miss Sindingane, gave him the name Nelson on his first day of school, following the custom to give African children English names. Later, Mandela attended the elite Wesleyan Mission School, the Clarkberry Boarding Institute, and Healdtown, a Wesleyan secondary school. He completed his junior certificate at Clarkberry and went on to Healdtown, a Wesleyan secondary school of some repute, where he matriculated. Mandela enrolled at the University College of Fort Hare, but was expelled for participating in a student protest. Along with other students, Mandela participated in a boycott against the university's policies, specifically concerning the quality of food and the lack of student representation in decision-making processes. This protest ultimately led to his expulsion from the institution. His life was marked by a growing sense of justice and equality. Mandela's early life was marked by a deep sense of justice and equality, influenced by the stories of his ancestors' valor and resistance against colonial forces. His legal studies started at the University of Fort Hare and after expulsion at the University of Witwatersrand. This shaped his understanding of the systemic injustices faced by black South Africans. Very few people know that before fully dedicating himself to the anti-apartheid struggle, Mandela worked as a night watchman at Crown Mines, a gold mining company in Johannesburg, to help pay for his law studies. The National Party's rise to power in 1948 marked the formal beginning of apartheid, a policy of racial segregation and discrimination enforced by law. This period saw the codification of racial discrimination with laws designed to maintain white supremacy and control over the black majority. Mandela joined the African National Congress, ANC, in 1944 and co-founded the ANC Youth League with other young activists. Their goal was to promote African nationalism, mass mobilization, challenging apartheid with strikes and boycotts, and self-reliance. Mandela's political consciousness deepened as he witnessed the brutal realities of apartheid. The Defiance Campaign of 1952, spearheaded by the ANC and the South African Indian Congress, marked a turning point in his activism. Mandela was appointed National Volunteer-in-Chief 
organizing mass civil disobedience against unjust laws. His efforts led to his arrest and conviction under the Suppression of Communism Act, resulting in a suspended prison sentence. Few people know that during his underground years, Mandela disguised himself as a chauffeur and used the alias David Motsamai to evade the authorities while organizing resistance activities. In 1961, Mandela and other leaders were arrested and charged with treason in the Rivonia trial. Convicted of sabotage, Mandela was sentenced to life imprisonment and spent 27 years in prison, mostly on Robben Island. Conditions were harsh. Mandela was confined to a small cell with a straw mat to sleep on and forced to perform hard labor in a lime quarry. He faced physical and emotional isolation, but remained resilient, using his time to educate fellow prisoners and engage in covert communication with the ANC outside. Despite the hardships, Mandela's imprisonment became a focal point for the global anti-apartheid movement. His stoic endurance and moral integrity garnered worldwide support, making him an international symbol of resistance against oppression. By the late 1980s, increasing internal unrest and international sanctions pressured the South African government to reconsider its stance. Secret negotiations began between Mandela and government representatives. Mandela's strategic leadership and unwavering commitment to a peaceful transition were pivotal in these discussions. On February 11, 1990, Mandela was released from prison. His release was a momentous occasion, broadcast globally, symbolizing the potential end of apartheid. Mandela continued to negotiate with President F.W. de Klerk, leading to the dismantling of apartheid laws and the establishment of a multiracial democracy. When Mandela accepted the Nobel Peace Prize in 1993, he dedicated it to all South Africans who had suffered and sacrificed for justice and peace. He shared the award with then-President F.W. de Klerk. Mandela's ability to forgive his oppressors was nothing short of extraordinary. He taught us that reconciliation is possible, even in the face of deep-seated hatred. His capacity for forgiveness and his vision for a united South Africa were truly remarkable. Last December, the world came together to pay respects to a wonderful man. We laid to rest Madiba and we were reminded of the lessons that he taught us about forgiveness and working for peace. In 1994, Nelson Mandela became South Africa's first black president, following the country's first multiracial elections. His presidency focused on reconciliation and nation building. Mandela established the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, TRC, to address past human rights abuses and foster healing. Nelson Mandela was not just a leader, he was a symbol of our struggle. His journey from prisoner to president inspired the world. Mandela's unwavering commitment to justice and equality despite the immense personal sacrifices he made, continues to inspire generations. Mandela's influence extended beyond his presidency. In 1995, Mandela founded the Nelson Mandela Children's Fund to improve the lives of children and youth in South Africa. The organization focuses on providing education, health care, and social development programs for vulnerable children. His legacy as a global advocate for peace, equality, and justice endures, inspiring generations to fight against oppression. Nelson was always focused on the greater good, never swayed by personal gain. As a special bonus for our dedicated viewers, we're sharing Nelson Mandela's favorite poem, which inspired him during his long years of imprisonment. Stay tuned to discover the powerful words of Invictus, 
by William Ernest Henley, a poem that embodies Mandela's unbreakable spirit and unwavering resolve. Don't miss this heartfelt conclusion to our journey through his incredible life. The out of night to covers me black as the pit from pole to pole. I think whatever God there may be for my unconquerable soul. In the fell collective circumstance, I have not cried aloud. Under the bludgeonings of fate, my head is bloody, but unbowed. Beyond this place of wrath and tears looms but the shadow of the shade. Yet the menace of the years finds and shall find me unafraid. Does not how straight the gate, how punishment charged the scroll. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul.